Welcome to Knowledge Miles, the planned series of Lord Mayor's webinars during the coming year. Uh, I'm Professor Tim Connell, I'm uh, Chairman of the Gresham Society, which will be hosting the uh, Knowledge Miles lectures on our website, and I'm also a, a court assistant at the Stations Company. Michael, over to you. Well, thank you, Tim. I'm uh, Professor Michael Mainelli. I'm the Alderman for Broad Street, and this is my very first day as the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of London and I am the chairman of the Zien Group, and I have a number of other roles, but most importantly, I am delighted to be sponsoring the Knowledge Miles series. Now, Michael, your theme for the year is Connect to Prosper, and of course, the Knowledge Miles in the World's Coffee House is part of our theme. Can you tell us more about your aims with the Connect to Prosper title? Yes, Tim. Well, I, I, I've been sitting there kind of wondering if we should be doing something like, you know, Connect to Prosper. Uh, but uh, the, the idea behind it is to celebrate the connections that come through London. That's the whole purpose of it. What makes London strong and vibrant as a city is the connections it has. Britons are not smarter than other people. They're certainly not dumber. But what we are is exceedingly well connected. The second thing I wanted to emphasize was the many knowledge miles in the square mile. We often talk about the square mile as if it's just about banking and finance. But we have 600,000 workers in the square mile. That's 45,000 in insurance, that's 55,000 in banking. So that's only 100,000, one-sixth of the population. We have well over 200,000, approximately 225,000 scientists, engineers, and technicians working in the city. And we always have. The city is much more than banking and finance. And then added to that, uh, other traditional sectors people would think about would be accountancy, actuarial, legal, both solicitors and barristers media, even life sciences. It's a very rich and vibrant city. And so what we're trying to do in this series is to bring out the various knowledge models that we have within the square mile. And in so doing, uh, we wanted to show showcase the intellectual life of the city. And I was hoping that in my travels abroad, Lord Mayor, as you know, Tim, does approximately 100 days out of the country. You wonder why you took the post for 365. <laughs> Um, but uh, we'll be doing 100 days and visiting about 25 countries. And when people say to me, well, you claim the city's full of a vibrant intellectual life, I can say, I can prove it here. Uh, go and have a look at this series. And of course, we have to bear in mind that um, the city isn't just what we see as the financial city and the other areas that Michael's mentioned, but it's also very much a focus for law, for medicine and for religion. So we do have a very wide range of top topics that we can call upon. One thing I was going to ask you, though, Michael, is we're going to put a lot of emphasis on the livery companies. Mm. And a lot of people don't quite understand what a City of London livery company is for. Mm. Could you enlighten us a bit? Yes, uh, I think it's interesting to look at the variety of intellectual life around us here. Uh, within just two miles of where we're sitting here, right at Bank Station, we have got 40 learned societies, 70 institutions of higher learning, mostly universities, and 130 research institutes. But we also have 111 livery companies. And the livery companies date back to the Saxon era. Uh, some of them have their origins in the seventh and eighth century. But what they are is effectively uh, trades groups. <clears throat> and so the original ones were things to do with, uh, well, some of the older ones, mercers, who traded uh, wool and cottons and silks. We have the grocers who would obviously be doing uh, spices and peppers and things like that. And on and on and on you go. And there were about 40 of these in the Saxon period. Another 40 arose uh, during the course of uh, the Industrial Revolution uh, and a lot of periods there. For, for example, spectacle makers is a, is a good example. Uh, and then we have uh, some modern livery companies, uh, so things like the management consultants, the solicitors, uh, the nurses, oddly, which is an old profession, only recently came in as the 111th. All of these livery companies are really about three things, commerce, community, and charity. That's the thing that they do. Uh, and the commerce is very important. That's how they were originally founded, uh, to hold up the trade, to set out standards for the various professions, the things like becoming a, a journeyman and a freeman and a liveryman. Uh, then on the charitable side, it was there to take care of the destitute, the widows and the orphans, but, but also the wider community and uh, very much about community, which was getting together and having some drinks and dinners. So those are the three elements of it. But the livery companies, all 111, are still active today. And they have volunteered in many cases, not all, 
to help showcase the uh, the city. So, for example, uh, we we have got areas like the Salters, who are chemists, wanting to talk about chemistry. We have the fan makers, who these days look at slightly different fans. They're looking at the aerospace industry and and air, air, aircraft engines. Uh, so we're hoping to show some of the life that these people are very involved in. And there's some 50,000 liverymen here out of our 600,000 in the square mile. And they are all very, very active promoters of their commerce. Uh, and that'll come through in the lectures, uh, but also do enormous charitable work. In fact, um, I was chairing the Pan Livery Steering Group uh, last year. And one of the interesting facts on this one is that something like 150,000 hours of time is donated to schools and uh, charitable institutions by the livery. And the livery as a whole uh, spends about 75 million pounds on charitable causes uh, and is arguably therefore somewhere between the third and the fifth largest donor in the nation as a movement. Yes, that's very interesting. Um, something though, uh, you mentioned going abroad for 100 days out of your plan 365. So it's interesting to see that you're interested in the United Nations Sustainable Development Policy. Um, you've managed to bring their 17 topics down to a, a mere, um, well, three, but actually what I call the six Ps. We've got um, posterity and the planet. We've got people and possibility. And we've got prosperity and productivity. Can you tell us a bit more about those and how you hope to showcase these during your webinars? Yes. Well, one of the things I'm trying to achieve uh, during this year, and I can only move it uh, a small dial uh, on the notch, uh, but what I'm trying to do is to showcase the fact that London has these many knowledge miles and that our workforce is not quite what people think it is. It's much more diverse and stronger in a, in a whole variety of areas. However, if I was sitting in Jakarta or Rio or, uh, you know, or Mumbai, I'd say, well, so what? You're talking about supply big deal. What's it mean to me? And what it does mean is that London is an enormous problem-solving city. Mm. People come here to find solutions to their problems. So when it came to structuring uh, both the Knowledge Miles series and the coffee colloquies, the 25 that we're having at Mansion House on a whole variety of issues, I thought to myself, well, the world sat down 10 years ago and said, what are the big problems? Uh, the UN said, well, let's have a look at it. And they hammered out 17. Climate change is there, as uh, SDG is the phrase, as SG11. Uh, gender equality is SDG4, I believe. SDG1 is uh, no poverty, no hunger, etc. So there's a whole variety of SDGs out there. And I thought to myself, well, the great thing to do would be to show London's ability to address each one of these areas. But as you say, 17 is a very big number. Uh, and further, it doesn't cover everything. So there's areas like artificial intelligence, uh, quantum computing, uh, philanthropy, and some other things. So the 17 plus about another eight will constitute the 25 sessions we'll be holding at Mansion House. But for this series, uh, those three areas that you spoke about, and I like your six Ps a lot, um, but just to remind people, you know, posterity of the planet, very much covering uh, the sustainability issues, not just climate change, but you know, clean, clean water, life on land, uh, life under the water. Uh, then we have the uh, people in possibility, really realizing our human potential. So that's things, again, uh, like gender equality, but also reduced inequality, SDG 10. And finally, uh, prosperity and productivity, which is all to do with the, the economy. And those are the three broad areas uh, that, this, that this is looking at. Well, finally, could you give us some idea of the lectures which are actually coming up to Ooh. give people some idea as to what they might be, uh, or the range of things that people might be able to, to watch? Well, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite excited. I, when, we, when we began this, we thought we might have about 50 lectures, and I think, uh, much to my team's surprise, we may, may well oh, exceed 100. <laughs> uh, it's like, so I'll just give you, I, I brought a little glimpse here of some of the things that are up. Um, one that's going to come off uh, very early on, and I, I, at first I was sort of, do we really want to do this? Uh, it's about the black cab, the iconic black taxi cab of London. And the uh, cab drivers, the, the virtual company of Hackney Carriage Drivers, is providing a lecture on a cab driver's navigational skills and how they still remain unbeatable by even the most advanced sat-nav systems. Uh, and that's going to be Tom Hutley from the virtual company of Hackney Carriage Drivers. And he's going to tell you some of the intriguing tricks of the trade and yet where the future is coming from for this iconic profession. Mm -hmm. So in an era when we seem to think everything's going to be automated away, here's Tom saying, don't be so swift. Uh, moving along a bit, 
uh, a company that I happen to be an honorary member of, the Worshipful Company of Scientific Instrument Makers, and they're going to be putting forward uh, a liveryman, Tom Davis, Dr. Tom Davis from Oxford Sigma, and he's going to be looking at the fascinating role of fusion energy and its current state of play. It's, it's long been said that uh, fusion energy is 30 years away and always will be, uh, but I think we're going to find out that that's not quite true, or at least people believe we've seen some enormous changes. So that should be a captivating perspective on one of the most important technologies of our near future. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a complete shift in a sense. So we're going to be looking at innovation, but we're going to be tackling one of the world's great future challenges, the future of St. Paul's Cathedral. And the team of St. Paul's Cathedral is going to explore the intersection of faith and business. And he's going to shed, shed some light on the concept of keeping faith with the city, which holds relevance to us all. And as a businessman who, is, who isn't religious, one of the things I do find interesting, uh, particularly uh, about the faith community, is what they can teach us about disagreeing agreeably. It's a very important uh, topic area. And finally, shifting back to science again, uh, the Francis Crick Institute, again, one of those institutes just off the road, will be delivering a lecture delving into health and the environment, but addressing something I think we uh, today, many people don't see lung cancer as an issue or it was a smoker's issue or is a smoker's issue, but no, they're going to talk about how air pollution causes lung cancer in never smokers. Uh, and so that's going to be an eye-opening analysis of a citywide problem. Uh, and along the way, I'm hoping that we can add a few lectures on some of the experiments that we're conducting here in the city. Uh, as part of a theme with a, a science type mayor, uh, we, we're actually opening the year. We had a, an experiment in 22 Bishop's Gate, that's the largest uh, tower in the city. And we brought uh, a quantum clock from the National Physical Laboratory and put it in the top and another one in the bottom and we recreated Einstein's two clock time dilation experiment, which hitherto has only been done in satellites. You may remember it from your uh, secondary school courses on relativity, two twins, one goes into outer space and the other one stays on Earth and the twin that goes into outer space comes back younger. Uh, but we've been able to do that and we hope to have a series of other experiments around the city and hopefully they'll be coming in to the series as they occur. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. I think there's a lot there for everybody, a lot of things to look forward to. And um, you need to look on the Gresham Society where these webinars will be recorded. And we look very forward very much to seeing the number of lectures which are coming up in the course of the year. Uh, I'm Professor Tim Connell, Chairman of the Gresham Society, and I'll be curating the series in the coming year. Michael, thank you very much indeed, and we look forward to your year as mayor. And finally, if I may, uh, thank you very much, Tim, and thanks to the Gresham Society and to Zian, and to all of the people who are presenting, yes. the, the, the well over 100. Uh, this whole Knowledge Miles lecture series, and just remember, Knowledge Miles in the Square Mile, the world's coffee house. We hope it uncovers the power of the city to help us tackle some of these global problems and provide some global solutions. Uh, and I'm delighted that you're listening and interested, and I look forward to learning and working with you over the year and years to come, uh, helping to make the world a better place. Thank you, Michael.